Hi everyone! Do you remember this lousy boat with this lousy design? Many of you didn't like it because you thought it was going to go really quick and it didn't or because you knew it wasn't going to be really quick and it didn't. So I'm going to try to do a quicker boat with a weird design too and see what happens. We are going to try and make a paddle boat that is kind of a racing paddle boat. So let's scrap this one and let me show you what we are going to use. The main shape of the boat is going to be this one. It already looks quick and I, I have a, a cover for this. Look at this. But the thing is that this isn't going to have a propeller in here or a ducted fan or anything. It's going to have paddles. And the idea is to have two paddles in the back and use differential steering. Hopefully. So to drive this, we are going to use these two brushless motors that are 920 kV which means that they are going to be a little bit more torquey and are going to run a little bit slower because if, if we use one of the really quick ones we might make the paddle wheels uh, explode just by the sheer centrifugal or centrifugal with one of the spinning forces whichever <laughs> it is the one that causes them to explode I've already done the wiring on the ESCs and in here there is one of these DC to DC adapters which gets the 12 volts from the battery and gives you whatever you adjust with this pot in here which in this case is 5 volts for the radio and the servos that one is just in here this is well, almost break it this is an inline with two XT60 connectors BEC it will give you 5 volts to use in your circuit inline like you connect this in here and in the other side the battery and you are done. We are going to use also these two servos in here which are waterproof for this project that's kind of convenient. A 3S battery, the radio receiver, some hardware, two motor mounts with this kind of arches in here to protect the rest of the boat from the water splashing everywhere because I think that's going to happen and a few paddle wheels just to make some testing. These are, uh, I think, uh, 60 millimeters in diameter. I'm preparing 80 millimeters in diameter and 100 millimeters in diameter, which is the maximum diameter that these arches will fit. But you might be thinking, then if you are going to use differential steering, what are those servos for? Well, that these are the mounting brackets and the motors are not mounted directly in the hull because my plan is to mount the motor in here and with the servos being able to raise and lower the height at which the paddle wheels reach the water to see if that makes any difference in the speed and it will obviously need adjustment with the different diameters so we will see how that goes but first, let me try and assemble all of this. One, two. This in here is one of the paddle wheels that I've already cleaned. I had to print them with support. Even if that's something I don't really want to do, but in this case, I, had, I think I had no option. And I had, as you can see, thinner and fatter wheels. I will start with this because these have less mass and those are going to be less prone to shaking and making the thing vibrate. And once we see how these perform, we'll take the decision on which wheels go with first. But I think we will try, we will try them all anyway. And now that we have the two paddle wheels installed on the motors, let's try to mount the motor brackets on the hull. Now to spacers. And 
and this is now the rear of the boat. And with the servos, I will be able to do this. Now, I think controlling the two heights separately is going to be a little bit too complicated, so I will try to do it at once, at least for now. Quick, 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 quick. That looks really cool. There are a few issues that I've already found with this design. How come not? The thing is that this, well, this is the first, the first try. And the thing is that I've done uh, three, three cavities inside this. There are, and I think you can already almost guess there are two seam lines in here. There are two chambers in the two pontoons in the, in the sides. Those are two holes separated. And then there is another one, another layer that goes through the middle of the hull to make another floaty in the bottom, just in case some water enters the thing so it doesn't go like to the bottom of whatever the place I tested it. But the thing is that now I have in here six holes to get out six connectors for the, for the motors that should be connected in here like this. But the thing is that I cannot fit my hand. Like I barely can do, maybe I can do this, but there is no way that I can maneuver in here to get the wires to these holes in here. So I will do another redesign and another reprint of just the hole so I get more space inside and that and where it is like easier to reach this part in here to show the connectors. I, I might even put them like in top of here, I don't know how. And I just thought that I'm going to open a hole in here just so I can reach to everything inside and do it as it is supposed to do. Okay, now we have access. So let me put this in here. Really, really nice. So now I can just move this in here. And I think I will have to rethink the positioning of the connector holes, or at least the angle, because this one is still moved, but they hit on the, on the wires in the cable. So I will have to redo this thing entirely. So I will give another thought to the positioning of these ones in here. Now let's install the servos on these holes in here. Look, I will connect everything now and see if everything moves as it should, which is important. First, power for the receiver, then one motor, the other one, first servo, second servo, a battery, for which there is not much space in here either. Those are not going to move up and down because I'm still missing the linkages in here. I just want to see if everything does its thing. You can see me move the controls. Okay, and now the servos on the side. Use this wheel in here, the trim pot, just to be able to adjust the height of the wheels, depending on the diameter of the wheel, the speed, or how much the thing sinks in the water. Whee! And the arms for the servos just finished printing, so I will try to install them in here. Oh, yeah.
<laughs> that look is weird. <laughs> okay. Whoop. I touched something. What did I touch? Woo. <laughs> okay, let's do the other side. Okay, they are not going in the same direction. I will rotate one of the channels now. Reverse, reverse one of the channels. Okay, it seems, it seems to work. One of the things that happened is while I was trying to reverse the servos, I did leave this one like blocked, trying to work uh, against the, the levers and it's burnt. It, it has, I don't know if you can see it there. It's completely burned in the, in the bottom. But what, I, I did switch this one for a new one and it's a little bit quicker than this one. I might use uh, the same servo on both sides, but uh, well, it, it goes uh, up and down. And once I, I change the position of the servos, it's going to be able to go all the way up and down and Everything seems to work more or less as expected. So it seems that we have finished for this week because I don't have time to go to a body of water and throw this in it. And well, I need to reprint the entire, the entire hull and switch. Well, all the things that I told you that I need to change. I'm printing more of this uh, in different uh, diameters. So next week, if the weather behaves, I will be able to do a test of this thing, which like, it doesn't look a little bit like a grasshopper with this in here. <laughs> so I will be able to do a test of this thing with all the new parts that I need to put on it. So subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And thanks a lot for everything, liking, sharing, commenting on my videos. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your Patreon support, guys. You keep these things happening. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. And now please go and make something.